Hello again, this is Tim Baldridge for another function of the day. Today's function of the day is conj. Now, I know, everybody's thinking, why do we need to talk about conj? Don't we use it every day? Well, yes, but there's a few weird parts about conj that uh, would be worth exploring. So the key to conj is that conj is kind of polymorphic and sometimes on more than one argument. And we'll see how that works out here. But conj will take a collection, let's say for instance a vector, and add an item to it in the most efficient way possible. So if you see here we have a vector of 1, 2, and we uh, add 3, it adds the item to the right side, to the end of the vector. Now, if we actually had a list here instead, we would see that it adds it, uh, wrong, wrong one, we would see that it adds it to the beginning. Now, why does it do this? Well, uh, the semantics of conj are that it adds it, like I said, to the collection in the most efficient way. So a list, in this case, um, if we have one, two, like this, one, two, is actually two con cells, right? And the con cells are head and tail, like so. So the most efficient way would be to conj it onto the beginning, which adds three uh, to the beginning. There we go. But now for a vector, the most efficient way to add it is to the other end, like so. And if we were to have a vector of three and four, then we get one, two, and then an in, uh, another vector inside that of three and four. And that makes, that makes sense. That's logical. So once again, what would happen if we have a hash set? And we add three to the hash set? Well, then we get one, two, and three. It doesn't really matter in this case where it ends up because the hash set are, you know, are, are unordered. And if we add a vector of items, they get one, two, and a vector with three in it. Okay, that makes sense. So the real fun begins when we have a hash map. So what would we expect to happen if we add just three to a hash map? Well, we don't have a key. And it says, don't know how to create iSeq from along. So conjuring onto a hash map, we require a key and a value, which would mean that it expects something like this, a seek of keys and values. So if we do, we conj on C and 3, then we get um, A, B, and C here, right? Now this is interesting, because if it's a seek, then we could probably have other items, right? D, 4, E, 5. And it says, vector R to conj must be a pair. So there is an extra little thing that if it's a vector, then we can't have more than one item in there. So that's a little of a weirdness about conch. But let's try something else. What would happen if we wrap it in a hash map? So what would conj, if we, if we said conj is conjoining, adding things to a collection, what would you expect this to do? A and B, C, D, and E. We kind of expect something like a merge, which in fact works just fine. So conjing two hash maps together is basically exactly the same as merge. If we were to do merge here, we would see the outputs are exactly the same. So it's kind of a weird side case of conj, but why is it that way? Why would we ever want to use that? Well, one situation where I've seen that used is if we have some data that looks like this. A, B, C, and then we have an empty set, right? And we'll put something in, in here. Uh, let, let's just do a, a C is three, and a D is a vector, and E is, um, let's see, a, a hash map of one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we have three different types here. All right, now, this is where conj kind of becomes a little helpful. We do update in data A, B, and if we do C, um, conj isn't going to work for that at all, but for instance, we could use increment and we would increment C there. But if we have D, we could just say conj and uh, foo, and it adds it to foo, right? Or 
if the user provides a path, which is a hash map, then if they give us some data like foo and bar, then uh, it will just add it to the collection, right? So what this allows us to do is to write something like this, add, add to data, and we are going to take as an input um, uh, node and data. Something's a little bit off with that indenting there, pardon that. So what we can do then is change this to node and this to data. Add to data D C and it says the keyword cannot be cast to associative uh, because we're uh, that actually does not make sense here. Ah, uh, because we're um, um, uh, uh, we're actually we did some sh uh, shadowing there of that bar. All right, there we go. So this adds C into the the correct area there, and if we do E, uh, foo bar. There we go. So I've actually used this in a situation where um, we provided just a generic data interface, and we would say, what path do you want to go to? So you could have a path here of like A, B, and C, and what operation, like this would just conj whatever data you gave to it. So it, it kind of locked it down, because up, with update in, um, you could delete the node or a bunch of other stuff, and we didn't want that in this case. Um, but in the case I was using this, uh, we wanted people to add data, but this allowed it to be polymorphic. So if you knew the type of the node at that at that level, it was pretty easy to just add new data into the collection. All right, so that's the video for today. Hopefully that shines a little bit of light onto some of the weird use cases of conj and kind of how conj can be used with hash maps. Thank you for watching.